trading is about knowing the field. Foreseeing the opportunity. Executing at the right moment. Timing is everything. Hello, everybody, and away we go once again. Welcome along to another episode of The Good, The Bad and The Rugby in partnership with City Index, the leading provider of spread betting, CFD and FX trading. Haskin Tinzer in the building. You're both well, I hope. Yes. What way? Um, yeah, very good, thank you. You're very bouncy. I am very bouncy. I've had a great morning filming with a Bertie. Can't reveal too much about it, but the Six Nations is coming up and something fun will be happening. It's quite a weird video, that, is it? Filming well, with Bertie. Well, you know, I mean, it's for the it's Six for Nations. for everyone out there. Yeah. It's on quite a niche market. For times, all, yeah, times haven't got that the farming hard. community. <laughs> <laughs> farm friendly. Yes, very farm friendly. Michael, you're in good health, I hope? I, I'm very good. I played... I'm a bit sore, actually. Played football yesterday. Um, for, again, who, for who? So we had a Rugby for Heroes uh, match of... Ex pros against ex football pros, <laughs> even just for Gloucester, Gloucester FC, Gloucester City FC legends. Funnily enough, rather large blokes, but can still have far more skill than quite in quite good shape rugby players. And we lost six one. Were you left right out? <laughs> yeah, I was just doing lengths up and down the pitch, going, "Use me, I'm open," and no one passed me the ball. Decoy. Yeah, Gary Neville does a very, very good video all about the overlap, which is just a video. It's like sixty examples of him just running overlaps and no one, <laughs> <laughs> no one ever <laughs> passing in the ball. Yeah, I felt like that for a long period of that game, and then we had we had Jordan Crane up front, the oil tanker up front, who was just basically backing into defenders. Play it to my feet. Play it to my feet. He's maybe quite. He was quite good, wasn't no, he? He's, he's yeah. actually all right. Coventry he's City trials right. or something. The, um, the engine's not what it used to be. <laughs> More of a roundabout. Yeah. Than a... And then you've got De- Delon Armitage, you just think, and Ryan Lamb, who just think they can hit it from anywhere um, and then never want to chase back. So, yeah, it was. Uh, we actually finished with 15 on the field and we still couldn't score. <laughs> oh, wow. That's Someone's exciting. at your door. Someone's arrived at the door. Should I check? Oh, you're, it you're, you're out. Mrs. <laughs> is happy. <laughs> Who's what? that coming around? Oh, it's the what, postman it's coming at this time of night. What? That's bad. Um, Good. How's the training going? Yeah, dreadful. How's it? Absolutely dreadful. Is it? Yeah. I can't believe you've actually gone ahead with it, I've by the way. I've got total buyer's regret. For those who've got no clue and no real interest, I've decided to fight Archie Curzon on April 21st. The only reason I'm doing it is for charity. We're fighting for the RPA and for the Brain Tumor Charity. <laughs> Which is lucky because if you get filled in, we might yeah, need both I'll of them. An advanced investment. Um, I need, I need, a, uh, I need a definite um, sort of screening. I need to. Well, have we some might way stream it actually. I need, I need that because I'll be in Japan where we first saw original Angry oh, Alex, right. and I just want to. I hope I see those eyes. Yeah. You're booked in. Yeah, I'm in, in the corner. I'm yeah. DJing. I'm so upset. And auctioning. That. And you're going to be my walk-on girl. Am I? Yeah. I it's look great, of stuff I look great in the thong. Budgie smugglers, please. So, um, imagine that. The training's dreadful. I mean, it hasn't... I, I say training, it's just a little light run on the running machine. Right. That's enough, isn't it? Well, is that what, are you doing hoping that? to run away from him? Because I would have I suggested so. you do some boxing as yeah. opposed to running. <laughs> not, really, not really very into, uh, yeah, into I, that. Into I, that. I should ring up uh, Nigel Redman. He used to have a body hardener in his pre-season. Who used to, he'd be lifting weights while someone hit him with a stick to <laughs> get him ready. He's like, literally like Happy Gilmore. <laughs> 30 more days till tryouts to go and toughen up. Nigel Redman. Yeah, so he'd be doing bench press and someone would be whacking him with a what stick. What a muppet. I love it. I love Nigel, but that's, in, that's a bit it's a step too far. Um, Have I bought the story about the time I went to do an interview at his house and the light blew up and set fire to his brand new carpet? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> no, we need to hear about this now. It's the go. first thing I ever did at Sky and I was a Bath Nors, as we all know, and the first person I ever went to interview as a junior reporter was Nigel Redman. Six foot six, opens the door. I'm like, hello. Came in, took an hour to set up because that's what you do, cameraman, sound man, lighting, etc. Sat down, two minutes into the interview, one of the lights blew up and scattered hot glass over the carpet and burnt his brand new carpet. I think, I think the interview cost two and a half thousand pounds. <laughs> and what did he do? He was remarkably calm about yeah. it because the carpet actually, I mean, it didn't burst into flames, but it smoked a lot. I mean, it was burning. And he sort of didn't really move. He was just like, oh, well, I guess that guy going to have to buy me another carpet, aren't they? I was like, day one on the job. Yes, I guess they are. <laughs> just fully agree with you. Great man. Confident. Yeah, you're not really going to stand up. No, sorry. No. Uh, liability doesn't cover that. Not like I could do that. Yes, sir. Great story. That's the, those are the highs and lows of my early careers at Sky. Should when we... I uh, first thing, when I first joined Bath, and we used to have seconds versus the first on, this, on a Thursday night, and it got 
it got heated because everyone who was in the seconds wanted to play on the weekend. So it's Thursday night, there's a good chance you can get a two-day dead leg or something and knock someone out of the game. <laughs> we used to kick the crap out of each other. And then we keep losing on a, on the weekend. And I, I sort of said, I, we had a meeting and I stood up and said, lads, lads, we beat the shit out of each other on a Thursday night. And then we, the enemy who we play on the Saturday were actually... We just touch up. So the next thing, next week, Ollie Redman goes out and literally flies into Steve Jomo, who was playing for Gloucester at the time, knocked himself out, out for about two, two weeks, and he blamed it on me for telling him that he was soft. I was like, well, I didn't say go knock yourself out. I just, this Don't is a time like when you can anymore, stamp on people. So, oh, wait, on that note, actually, um, we're going to do all things Six Nations. A light touch, Six Nations preview this week. But uh, we did want to say thank you very much for all the feedback on last week's show. I think we expected a fair spread of opinion and views on what was a fairly flammable subject matter. Uh, I think we're all hoping we're going to talk less about the controversy and more about the good stuff over the course of the tournament to come. Any strong feelings from you? Biting, spitting, gouging, bloodgate? Uh, yeah, I, I completely agree with you that gouging is at the is at the top of of the list and and should have no place in our sport. Uh, I, I sort of sit a little bit with Hass though um, around. Oh some my of god! The stuff. Is that a pig flying over the building? Is that a, <laughs> is that a hen with teeth? Hell I see frozen over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I uh, I think there are most things of of proper dirt have gone out of the game. But uh, yeah, the occasional eye gouge. It's quite a difficult one with the eye gouge where you were saying when you hand someone off and it goes in their eye, you know it, but. You're not going to stop at the same time, but it's never done intentionally. But the the ones that are done intentionally are the worst. Worst thing that ever happened to you on a rugby field? Uh, what foul play wise? Yeah. Um, or that you did. <laughs> Actually, you can throw Don Gannon into the mix. <laughs> <laughs> that kid's never no, played again. Poor, uh, yeah. poor, poor uh, nine. No, I think the worst thing I ever did was I needed an Italian in the face on. And on purpose and had immediate regret, but somehow it was. At a what does the tins with immediate regret look like? What it's sort do? of neat. Uh, sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry about that. No, I was really. I, 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 <laughs> I was actually probably at that point with that Italian. I was as angry as I was with the guy who played against Mitch in Hampton. Um, oh, yes. So I was pretty angry. But I needed a guy in the head, and the referee saw it, and he went. And it was at a, a time where he went. Look, we don't need to see that, or I might have to do something about it. Oh, you might <laughs> yeah. have to do something about he, it. Because the guy was stood up, and I sort of took his head down to oh, my knee. Wow. Oh, so he wasn't even a knee on the floor. It was a, you've grabbed him, and yeah. he's gone. We don't need to see that. No, so, so he, the guy's tried to start a fight with me, and then I've completely lost my. And as it as he's ducked, he's ducked because he thought I was going to hit him. So as a, an automatic reaction, I've gone. Well, if he's ducked, I'll knee him, and then I've gone. Uh, and the rest just stood there, and I've gone. Uh, <laughs> and he's basically seen the build up and he saw the guy nausing me and he went look we don't need that do we and cool. I went no we don't sir sorry Common we sense didn't, you prevails. said sorry to the referee but not to the Italian no, player not no. to the Italian I said well, you watch your back pal that could be your get out of jail free card that if um, Archie looks like he's beating you up headbutt him I'll switch the lights off we'll call it a draw <laughs> and we'll all just go home yeah that's that a great be, yeah. idea Learn where the light switch or the fuse box is. What's, yeah. what's the movie? Ocean? Which Ocean's 11, 12, 13 is it where, it, where they're having the boxing match Glitch and all the lights go off? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. That could be it. I'm going to need all of this. I think that's so, what you do is coming through. Hask's in your corner, switch the lights off. Hask has got uh, infrared. Uh, PNG. Yeah. Is it PNG? No, no. What is it? Night vision. Infrared goggles. or night vision. Yeah. He jumps in, bash, knocks Archie yeah. out, runs out. You stand over him with your foot on his it. chest. I've got a load of night vision for my dogging. That he, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> with the windscreen yeah, wipers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, honestly, I did. I once parked in a lay-by once. Just no, don't, don't, don't tell this story no, in front of the live microphone. <laughs> I just I got the lights wrong, flashed it, and some Willie came in the window out to panic. I, didn't, I made a mistake. Did you put the automatic club on it? You just stuck there. Because you know, if you do it wrong, it's like you flash two lights, turn the interior lights on. I genuinely just went into a lay by, made a mistake, and there was Willies everywhere. I, I thought it was awful. I never went into that lay by ever again. Well, say that. Not while I was married, anyway. <laughs> on a Tuesday. Um, just quickly on last week's show, <clears throat> excuse me. There was one thing that we did want to tidy up. Um, we want to make it very clear that nothing offensive was ever said to Trevor Brennan from the stands in the incident that we discussed at some length. It is something that's been confirmed in the court of law. Uh, we are more than happy to clarify and hopefully put a pretty unsavoury incident to bed. Um, it was a very clear case of a player bringing the game in disrepute. Nothing came from the fans 
to the pitch. You were trying to make a point, yes. but we didn't get the right right example. Yeah, as is often the case with this podcast, I was fully unprepared, didn't read or look into any form of detail. I ran with a theme that if a fan, which happens to me quite often, feel they can speak their mind, they should be harshly punished and everything should be okay. But in this particular case, the fan said absolutely nothing. Trevor Brennan acted like a thug. I got it completely wrong, for which I want to apologise. I will caveat this. Do not get accustomed to me apologising. I will not be doing it again. <laughs> Apologies to those concerned. Happy to stand corrected. Uh, happy to leave that where it lies as well. This week's show, The Six Nations, is upon us. I've written a really poor man's Eddie Butler. You know, the sort of whimsical... Yeah. And I've, I'm going to leave it. Eddie Butler didn't script. like me. Why? He, I don't know. He got very, always used to get very funny about me. Oh. And he used to say Something weird things did? about it. He once described me as some sort of dog... <laughs> not, not like a, like an out, like a Labrador. Like I used some word that basically meant an effervescent, very. Yeah, he just didn't like just me. Just seeing right. compliments were called effervescent. As him and Brian Moore just not liking me for BBC. It wasn't, wasn't great when I came on. It's a lot of negativity around. And that. you gave them a fair amount of material as well. I, I absolutely did. Yeah. And, but but Eddie Butler has the most incredible voice. Yes, yeah, he does. Whimsical. No one ever does a voiceover montage. Yeah. He just if you, like a rainy. <laughs> kind of dark winter's yeah. night at yeah. the Principality. Eddie Butler just... You've just nailed it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Poet. Yeah. Um, very simple show this week, as we said. Three things we love about each of the Six Nations teams. There will be some very good pods out there going into the depths and the dark arts and the angles of entry into breakdowns and team selection. We've done some quite heavy shows recently, and frankly, at this point, with all the optimism and hope that is to come around a new Six Nations, just going to talk about the things we love. Just on the heavy shows, I did see a man on... Uh, I was racing on Saturday at Cheltenham, and I might have bumped into a man who is charged with building a global calendar and who would come on the show. So maybe part okay. three... Yeah, we could. Well, part three, it. part three is already coming together. This would be part four. Well, part four, yeah, could be the global season. I'm oh. going to dig out my notes from two years ago. You're, you're well, I had bracketed part four for where I'm announced president of World Rugby. That was right. what that's I had. Part nine hundred and ninety-nine. You, know, you don't think that's that would no. never happen? No, uh, that'll be on your desk. See, bed, sort of blue sky thinking, left yeah. field thinking. I think you, you don't think. Imagine share. me kicking the door in and going, "Let's fuck some shit up here." Worldwide, <laughs> wide, wide prestige, black leather gloves. You're old. <laughs> you're boring. I can't understand what you're saying. Leave the room. Invest. <laughs> Something like that? No? No, I think that'd be good. I think that'd be really I'm, powerful. I'm Oi, that. Jog, jog on love, get the tea. <laughs> That's what I would say if I was old school, but I'm not. You, young sir, you get the tea. Modern man. That's what I do. <laughs> Shit like that. That's how I would That's how I do it. Global game. Play who you want. As long as I'm getting paid, I'm happy. <laughs> that's that's what I would mean. yeah. What's that Russia you want in? No problem. <laughs> We'll give you Ukraine. Too much. <laughs> Don't make bad deals. I'd, that's what I'd, that's what I'd 100% do. Imagine that. Imagine that. Uh, the owners giving all that. Put the phone down. Yeah, Shut yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> we'll pull together a pitch doc uh, and send it to World Rugby Let's just do the de let's do the deck on that. I would love amazing. that. Come on, uh, vote for me. I promise you, I'll have an election. I'll stand. Right. I'll stand. We'll do it. Okay. I, don't, I can't really carry on with this. I'll ride, I'll ride Bill Beaumont into the thing on, on, on his back. Big Bill, like Lasso. Yeah. If, if you can Someone climb, needs to tame this horse. Yeah. If you can climb, climb Mount Beaumont. Oh, yeah. Bill's on side. Shh, don't speak, Bill. That'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Oh, God. I'm never going to work it out. It's fine. It doesn't matter. We will remain in this cupboard for many years yeah. to come. Yeah. We ain't it's going like anywhere. It's like a airing cupboard with yeah. just a few bits of sprinkles of bullshit <laughs> yeah. on, the, on the walls. A couple of books and an old rugby <laughs> yeah. ball. Some old towels. Pretending we're a rugby sheets. pod. <laughs> France. Oh, there you go. go. Straight Three in. things we love. <laughs> <laughs> Three things we love about France. Who's starting? Has you start. Has has brought absolutely, absolutely nothing, nothing in terms of preparation. So I still other want you to make it slightly better. If you've ever noticed, <laughs> the shows we've got to prepare, you prepare, I don't. Uh, well, we could go round the table one at a time. I first up have gone Roman Entermac. Um, just from the New Zealand game, he ran the ball out of his old dead, dead ball area. The no look pass to my man crush at the time in Jaminet and then they almost scored one of the greatest tries that the Six Nations has ever seen and, it, and I just feel that the bat line that they've got at the moment and with him pulling the strings is is a throwback I think France is a bit of a throwback for me to the, the days of the greats the Sellers the Saint Andres the Blancos and even a little bit of Castanier thrown in there and uh, I just feel that with this French flair that we're seeing a renaissance of this rugby that we all want to watch and we're all excited to see the French play. Which leads me on to the next one, which is 
what they've also got is that power. So yep. the pack is back. It's not. It used to roll. They used to roll over at away games and get their bellies tickle. But now with Cyril Bay, Julian Marchand, Cameron Wocky, Chalange, Gross, Cretan, Aldrit. <laughs> nice in work, isn't it? Cretan. What a great, uh, I call uh, Chloe a cretin the other day. She got really upset. But where? I know what it means. But where did you get it from? You, why are you speaking like an old Victorian man? <laughs> I'm spending too much time with Payne. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a great word though. Um, but I just I, again, that's a. I, I just feel that the way that they beat up New Zealand in the in the autumn and they just they was just so physical um, is again a throwback and that's why the last game hopefully a Grand Slam game which leads on to my la- last point is why the game's known as Le Crunch Le Crunch was because of how physically it was again it was nasty it was uh, it was dirty and I just feel hopefully they'll have learnt from a red card or two last year that they're not going to have that side but. It will be a crunch, and hopefully, it will be a crunch for a grand slam. How good would that last game of the We're Six gonna Nations? Be there. We're going to be there. We will tear that city apart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and my third thing is Sean Edwards. Brilliant. I think what he can come up with, he keeps making advancements with this team, both defensively, both what they are as a unit, uh, and how they play together and how they communicate together. And I think he's just been a, a breath of fresh air. And hopefully, he'll be in his best form this week. He'll be in his pants. <laughs> Boxing, shadow boxing, getting someone, getting a trial player in just to beat him up, just to show the lads how to do it. And, and we'll what go was the song that. he kept playing last year? Was it Entrance? Free? Well, who's saying Free from Desire? Oh, uh, he's brought that. Pure. Yeah, 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 he put that into the French changing room. No, 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 no. And it wasn't Entrance. I can't remember. No, it's who it not. Was. It's no, some it's not sort entrance. of Entrance. Uh, entrance. Set me free. Oh yeah. Where, um, it's a gala. Gala. Amazing. Yeah. I should um, know that. I always play it my sets and loves it. Um, very good, Michael. You've led yeah. us out very strongly with very your passion good. for Le Bleu. Um, you can go anywhere off the back yeah, of this, well. but things that we love about France, historically players that we're looking forward to this year. Okay, well, first of all, we'll go with Dupont because he's small, he's sexy, he's powerful. He just featured on French Did you see GQ. the photo shoot? Or was it Vogue? No, it was GQ. GQ, dreamy. But in a yellow... Big yeah. bird suit. Yeah. Forward slash dressing. Game. That's it. That's fashion. You don't need to understand it. You don't need to know why. You just need to go, wow. When, you, when you're that good, you don't care. Yeah, exactly. You can do whatever you want. You want to look like Big Bird by Sesame Street? This, the episode is sponsored by the letter A because he's awesome. Um, let's imagine what he did. <laughs> or, right. Ah. Oh, uh, uh, no. <laughs> ah. Ah. Uh, it's E. Um, uh, ah, a Greg. That's E, a Greg. Ah, B, C, D, E, F, G. I, yeah. I wonder anyway. why you never made it. <laughs> I know. I don't know why. I've got the same French accent that Sean Edwards has got. <laughs> Weirdest photo shoot as an interlude that you ever have been involved with. You've done numerous and you can't claim Stad. I won't. The, the, what is it? Well, I was, the gods or I was it uh, as a Greek god on a plinth for the uh, the Daily Mail supplement looking like that carrying with, with a world on my, my shoulders looking right. fit I might add. Right. Um, that's still on the internet. I think it's right. the La, 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 Live magazine. It was. Right. Very good. Rig was on, was on point, but it was very yeah. difficult. My it's old very th- hard to find an actual photo shoot with James with clothes yeah. on. That's very true. That's um, very true. Uh, but I got with the old tender nights on my knees, literally kneeling on a plinth, photographed in a sort of a, a toga. Right. Giving it that one was very difficult. I, I, I had to be prized <laughs> out of it. I, as I, I think the exact noise I made when I moved was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As your cartilage went. Um, but, well, Karen, you tell that photo shoot then, go on. Weird, <laughs> there, there's, there's one really bad one. Right? The first rugby, uh, whatever the rugby magazine was called, what was it called? Rugby... Rugby World. World. Um, the first really <laughs> Institution. Bad, yeah, institution indeed. But because my nickname was Tins, they had me in a photo shoot with loads of like HP beans and stuff and tins. Oh, oh wow. And, I was, oh. and obviously I was 19 at the time and I was like, I'll do this, but... Regretted. Can I, yeah. can I just say something? That that level of like um, creativity in media PR is they're, they're using the same stuff now. That's why rugby hasn't progressed. Right. That's the same level. Of, you know, they go, oh, I'll tell you what we'll do. Tins, tins of beans. <laughs> That's the same people who are marketing the whole of rugby at the moment. So they go, we're, we're quite forward thinking. Right. You're not. And then the other one that jumps to mind was when, I, when we had an England, a sort of offshoot England photo shoot and there was me, Josh Lucy, Mark Cueto, um, Danny Grucock. Who else was there? And we had to get dressed up as like glad- gladiators for a photo shoot. And it was in Bristol. And it was in it, the studio was owned uh, um, <laughs> by a, a lady who was also maybe an adult actress. 
Oh, wow. And she came in for a photo. And... We do dress up as gladiators. They've got, they've got one of those where they pull the... They, they take <laughs> that a is what, be well, careful about what you say because yeah. you're doing that. Rotating <laughs> action and pulling something. So, so basically it was an Insta photo thing. And so everyone was... Polaroid. All, Polaroid. And everyone Insta was... Insta photo yeah, thing. It wasn't an Insta photo thing back there. Polaroid. You're not in charge of marketing. And then, so, then they were like, oh, hang on, let me get the digital camera. And on that point I sort of slipped out the side oh that sounds dodgy too in like the <laughs> concert but I was like this you don't want to be in this photo so I got out of the photo and then Danny and obviously was in, with this lady then it was all in the paper and everything but it was a great photo shoot but then it was one where she's like oh, how about you get in the hot tub run <laughs> run <laughs> for uh, the hills what I'd be in the you'd hot tub you'd have been straight in the hot tub yeah, yeah. Um, one of the worst sorry James how did your clothes fall yeah. off yeah. I don't know it's melting in the water um, <laughs> one of the worst photo shoots I actually stitched up my lovely and best friend Paul Doran Jones. I had done some work with Attitude magazine and Gay Times, and they'd asked me to do a follow up photo shoot, and I couldn't make it. So I said, "But I know, I know a sexy man that would be keen." So I said, "BLT, BLT, big lean and tanned." And I said, uh, "Doz will do it." <laughs> and then Doz went there. And he came back, and he, he'd been very quiet. Like I didn't get any follow up calls. I was like, "You're right. A couple of days, nothing." And then he saw me. He was like, "Jim, <laughs> what?" the hell happened? What did you, Why? where were you? And I said, well, I couldn't make it in the end. And he went, apparently I left him. And the photo shoot was him on on the bed lying flat with basically his big hairy ass in front of the camera with hashtag elite on it with his arms folded looking like the guy from, um, is it, uh, where well, they have a dance off, I don't know if it's old school, is it old school or something where they where the guy's on his hands and knees and does a, an amazing dance? Oh, uh, I know, uh, it's Star Starsky and Starsky Hutch. Starsky Hutch. So basically there's the scene in Starsky and Hutch where this guy lays on the floor, kicks his legs from behind, Doz is doing that and his ass <laughs> is just a big hairy ass. It's awful. The worst photo in the world and it's all over the internet. He's never forgiven me right. and that is by far and away the worst photo shoot I was ever involved in. You should definitely Google it. Good. I'm sure we can find the picture and put it across, across our social I think we probably can, yeah. Yes, let's um, do that. But I said Dupont. Yeah. Because that's where we started. Dupont, um, uh, because he's uh, amazing, strong, sexy, everything. Uh, away days yeah. in France, hotel food, incredible. So you go and stay in a, an away day in, in, in the UK, you know, beans, sort of dodgy stuff in France. It's just a veritable feast of a delicacy of cold meats, of incredible food. I mean... Gumbleeder. Yeah, at the scum, <laughs> gum bleeders, baguettes, you know. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Lots Jesus. of cheese, fantastic. I mean, they do try and bastardise it. Like, you turn up and you think, Christ, you know, this the first day one, you're like, amazing, some sort of incredible French dish. And then you know that some... One of the northern lads has had a word with the cook and is suddenly <laughs> lasagna. Like, oh, for fuck's sake, like, can't we have something that we'd really appreciate? Um, so that's very good for me. And secondly, it's just the, I know it's the oldest cliche in the book, but the sort of, um, what is the word? You just never know what you're going to get with France. Je ne sais quoi? The, no, not je ne sais quoi, just more the kind of. A moment you could break, break out in ultimate violence, just elbow someone's head clean off. <laughs> they could self the implode. The whiff of cordite. They, yes, mm. but just it, but, but in both ways, yeah. it could just be utterly dramatic. Or one of them would just lose the plot and punch someone's face straight off, and then the whole game will be ended and everything will be a cat catastrophe. Or they'll set the world alight. Those three things for me just define France. And I know everyone always says about that oldest cliche: you never know what you're going to get. Things that people who know nothing about rugby say, but it's still true to this day. You know, they should have won. What is the one? The last? What are they? Which one was the? Were they? The Scotland game. Yeah, yeah. When they complete balls yeah. that up. Yeah. You know what I mean? well, they, they should have won at Twickenham and lost. Should have yeah. won against Scotland at home. Yeah. And lost. Yeah. The way he's like, they should have lost they'd... to Wales and won. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what I mean. And everyone goes, "Well, it's a cliche, but it's true." Yeah. yeah. I had Dupont and his yellow dressing gown. I had Fabien Galtier's glasses. Yes. I just think if you're going to run run a sport. You've got to look like a boss. And yeah. He does just that. I also love the fact this week that England had Jessica Ennis Hill in for inspiration. Brilliant. Absolute, you know, legend of sport on this, these parts of the shores. Galtier got in the French Legionnaire, just said, right, we're going hardcore. It's sort of, and they look fantastic. I just, I like the sort of military connection. And I said, Paris, Stade de France. There is just something amazing about that stadium. I'm looking forward to our, our jaunt. Yes, oh, sure. but I love stadiums I think Angry <clears throat> Alex could come out again no no he's yeah, very a few placid red wines, no. he gets a bit he's very placid but I love stadiums and, and I was thinking about this we'll come on to this I think Principality is a stadium where just things happen yeah. 
and the Stade de France is a stadium where things happen. You know, France wa- robbed Wales of a Grand Slam last year. I loved your Grand Slam in 2016. Sexton's drop goal in 2017. You could go yeah, on yeah. and on on things. Dramatic things happen at the Stade de France. And the crowd under the play lights. a big role with yeah, them. They now. do, yeah. When you when you go into that stadium, you know it's hostile. Yeah. But it's one of those where you can definitely win the crowd. Yeah. If you can silence them, it's a very it's a bad place for France. If you're if you're dominating them, they get yeah. uh, they end up being on your side, getting on France's back. So it's all about and you never know, you might have a live cockerel just yeah, chip in just they used them. to have an artist who'd paint the game yes. mid game, which yeah. is a remarkable and thing. And then um and the post-match food at Stade de France is delightful as well. You just get like red... It's like when you go to it, the, the, the Spirit of Rugby post-England game, <clears throat> it's a lot of old duffers in blazers, blah, 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 you know, and the food's nice. But whenever you go to one of these sort of European countries, if they get a 16, you know, 60-piece yeah. brass band, <laughs> yeah. buffet table, far as the eye can see, unlimited red wine, sort of a little smattering of speeches, but no one gives a shit. <laughs> Everyone's on the floor drunk. Nobody knows what they got. You know, there's someone's been shot in the corridor. That's the kind of thing we want post match. And, right. and I, this is in your world rugby mandate, is it? <laughs> yeah. I would, I, no, do you know what it is? Uh, you, you, the, my number one rule was an old duffer is only allowed to speak for 30 seconds and cannot, you know, can't deviate. And if he, if he speaks for too long, the lectern electrocutes him and a trap door <laughs> opens up and he falls back into it. Because, right. yeah, because otherwise he's just droning on. And then they do that thing where they hand the corner flags over yeah. and they just <laughs> shut up. Do it, do it in your own time. Stop wasting mine. <laughs> just wanted to have great respect for all of the uh, high they the, No, they are the <laughs> respected custodians of the game of the rugby football union. The ones on the gravy train with their... Tr- yeah. the, what is it? Um, what is a uh, uh, guy from Yes Minister with their no, uh, when he talks about the, the Bureau Bureaucrats with their trotters in the trough or whatever it is <laughs> talking about all, heaps of champagne to be drunk truffles heads in the trough yeah <clears throat> essentially they all need a three day trip over there as well you can't, they can't oh, just they can't just fly over on the day and fly back you can't back. be expected to do that how, are how you can possibly, you possibly operate yeah, how are you, having three days in a five star hotel they've, and they've got the ferry. four separate blazes to wear 600 <laughs> litres of red wine to drink you know they're on a fucking time scale favourite game you ever played at the Stade de France uh, um, probably 2000 when we beat we beat them 15-9 I think yeah. we beat them uh, Jason Robinson scored that try on the right that was 2002 but 2000 you, yeah Johnny, oh, kicked, Johnny kicked we points. lost in 2002 yeah you lost in 2002 2000 was when Johnny ended uh, Intermac, ended Intermac. Yeah, yeah, yeah with the ball back inside but that was a, that was a that was a huge win for you guys actually. yeah that was a massive win and then we fucked it up in Scotland but they um that that was that was a proper game as well. Yeah. That was when France were brilliant. So it was a proper game. Yeah. And is that where the I'll ask you because you know more than me because I'm pretty sure we have. You're BT, Mike Tyndall. What would you B- like to know? We had BT <laughs> we had BT cell net shirts on, but that's where the picture of the the three back rowers on the in the in the sort of starting position on the goal yes. line was, wasn't it? Yeah. That's great. That was a great, great win. 2016. 2016. 100 percent Grand Slam. Failed three times before. You know, we, we'd practice all week certain scenarios. One of them in particular, if Dylan Hartley goes down, what do we do next? The, 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 the team that comes out the other side of a yellow card or a serious injury with the, carrying the momentum will win. You know, he, he guillotine someone, knocked himself out, came on, nailed the first line up, went in and carried on, won it. And it was um, incredible. Why were you so bloody at the end of that game? Did I was always nose, quite bloody by the end. It was my it was my nose. I think nose, yeah. Um, I got a big beak and it and it got uh, it got cut. But Danny Kerr as well, that incredible first try. Yes. And I think it was interesting because um, Billy, I th- you know, they were very physical. You know, uh, the French on that particular day, were, like, a lot of our runners weren't getting kind of traction. But it was one of those things that was so attritional. And he was like, "Just keep carrying, mate. Keep carrying. Just had to keep carrying, tiring them out, and eventually the space would come." And we celebrated the win. Go anywhere in any game. Or any any sort of period of French rugby favourite player to watch from France. My love for Jean Baptiste Lafond <laughs> will never die. And Laurent Caban. Um I, wa- I I watched quite a few of I watched some stuff today on the French and uh, like you said earlier, there was a mixture between unbelievable tries and unbelievable fights. Um <laughs> All action. All action. I don't know. They've they've had some unbelievable players over time, whether it be Seller. Blanco. Mm, I mean, but you could even, you know, you can even go the wingers. They've had Bernard Sal, Dominici, R.I.P. Yeah, Dom, yeah Dominici, Josian. There was, was a try favorite. today by Josian, and yeah, I mean, he was good. Le I would, Giroux. I would, uh, I would go. 
because I played against it, I'd go burn, I'd go burn at Sal. The Silver Fox. The Silver Fox. Yeah. He like, was a hell of a player. He was Casting so rapid. Yeah. Just small, incredible. That? Casting Ed. Yeah. Just next level. Yeah. Just did things that people really dream of. All the skills to pay the bills. That's quite like Michelac as well. Michelac as well, when he was on, on form. <laughs> Just an utter... And, and Michelet did, whilst playing for the Barbells, drink a glass of champagne before he knocked the ball over, didn't he? A conversion. Did he really? Yeah. Player. Viva France. Um, just before we do Italy, time to bring in a new friend of the good, the bad and the rugby. We've got an official pizza partner on board for the Six Nations. High time indeed, because actually we're chewing through the beers already. Um, <sighs> this is your ultimate treat. We've basically teed this up just to satisfy your intense excitement for all things... New Brand Association. They are the perfect takeaway for all the rugby action starting this spring. It is welcome to the ranks. Dominoes. <laughs> oh, did you say Dominoes? Don't you mean Yuli Yuli Domino? <laughs> Ryan is coming in with our new friends, yes. freshly ordered to the studio. Yes. Ryan, well done and thank you very I'm much. I'm an indeed. absolute Domino's keynote. My children have just got very happy. I love because the, genuinely, oh my God, I, I genuinely, I genuinely could not be more excited for this <laughs> right now. I'm so unbelievably hungry. Domino's, you talk, I'm going to chew. No, so I, I know people go. James, you've got a sick rig. How can you eat Domino's? Well, first of all, moderation is key. And if you have a, a, a good understanding of nutrition, which I do, you can fit a Domino's in at least twice a month, which I do regularly. I'm very jealous because I discovered that my friend Roman Kemp off of the jungle. I don't Sorry, know if you your know. Sorry, friend who? That. Did you say Roman Kemp? <laughs> he, top capital, uh, capital, capital FM presenter. Um, he had a button on his fridge that used to... That, you know you get, like, uh, buttons for certain brands. I think they're connected to companies. You press them and they'd do an auto-refill. He had one for Domino's. You pressed it and his local Domino's would get a message and he'd just get one. And But this is the closest thing because he wouldn't share the contact. Okay, I'd hate... So you're going to have to chew, <laughs> yeah. swallow, and Dwell then speak? On. It would be a, an interesting uh, drive for the Domino's to come and drop one off at my house. Lovely little pizza oven in the bar. It'd be nice. <clears> I'll tell you what, though. Do you remember the um, that movie Richie Rich or, um, with uh, Macaulay Culkin, Culkin, where he has a, I can't say a rival brand, who does something different in his house? Maybe, with the Royal Connection, you could have a small Domino's little building with a man in there, and whenever you, you fancy, just press a button. Permanent van. Mm. Amazing brand partnership. Quite difficult to do a podcast while eating <laughs> enormous amounts of pizza. Well, you don't want people at home don't want to keep hearing us eating with heavy breathing. I like, tell you what, though, we're doing <laughs> we're doing wonders for the hunger levels amongst those people yeah. listening. It was like Zoe when she was on the phone; and you could all hear her. Eating. <laughs> it's not just stuffing our face, although that is a big perk of this job. We have got some mega stuff lined up over the coming weeks. Keep an eye on our socials for the chance to win an amazing prize for you and all your friends. You've got a bunch of hungry rugby watching mates. If you do, we've got a hundred Domino's pizza voucher for you and four Six Nations rugby jerseys of your choice. So the whole squad, family and friends, can enjoy the game. To top it all off... Well done. Well done. Thank you. Well done. <clears throat> These things aren't just sort of thrown together. Are they not? <laughs> no. Although it often looks like it. Uh, yours truly, Hask, uh, and Tins are going to hand deliver your prize next week. All you need to do is follow the simple instructions on our social channels. For those of you not lucky enough to enter... James, you're not allowed to enter. Okay. Domino's are offering 50% off pizza when you spend £30 or more online. A big welcome to the team at Domino's. We can't wait to get stuck in over the next few Sorry, weeks. Sorry, did you say 50%, Alex? I did indeed, Is that James. the kind of value we're giving our listeners? That is incredible. It is indeed. Actually, I have to say, it has properly chir chirped me right up. This. <laughs> I am struggling a little bit earlier. Welcome aboard. Very good to have the good people on board. Just one little caveat to that. When you say I'm delivering it, yeah. I'm not going to actually have to see. I'm not going to shake anyone's hand. I can do it from a. Can I drive throw past? Them? Can I do a drive-by pizza ring and just sort of throw the pizza out? Because I don't want to interact. That's not part of the deal. Smash it on the window. <laughs> <laughs> My idea has come into fruition as well. What's that? About how we're going to do it. Oh, have we? Mm. Is it? Yeah. Amazing. Okay. You're I think I might that. know this because I've seen the picture. Have yeah. you seen it? Yeah. It could be very funny that. Stand by. <laughs> Should we probably Haskin stop team? eating because we can't? I can't. The heavy. Br yeah, I can't stop. <laughs> it's so Moorish and delicious. And actually, <laughs> the nose breathing you, gets really loud. You went with the. With I'm pepperoni. genuinely really hungry. You what? went with the pepperoni passion. Tins took my one, which is pepperoni passion with tandoori chicken and sweet corn. It's actually a naughty one. You can throw some jalapenos on there if you're feeling uh, particularly dangerous, and some bacon. And then mm. I actually use the um, Frank's red hot sauce dip. Has, oh, what do you make about the people who leave their crusts? 
I would say that it's a bit like the people who leave sandwich to cut the crusts off sandwiches. Grow up. Love a, first love, of all. love a cucumber sandwich with the crusts off. <laughs> well, yeah, if they come with the crusts off, but I wouldn't order it with the crusts off. I think you, it's absolutely fine to leave the crust for dipping purposes. Dipping absolutely. Purpose. Dipping, you cannot just not eat the crust because, first of all, you're missing out on valuable carbs <laughs> and your rig's not powered on just, you know, pizza alone. You need those good quality carbs as well as the protein. <laughs> And what a little extra dip. And also you can save them, so when you're halfway through the movie or whatever you're doing or the rugby game, because that's what you should be eating or watching sport in general, you can then come back to it and dip away. And it's, it's like, oh, it's like a it's bread a double stick. treat. It is like a double treat. It's like you've forgotten about how good it was and you come back to it. <laughs> I actually bought a knife and fork in and a napkin to play a gag. I just got so hungry, I forgot, <laughs> forgot, to, forgot to play the cards. Yeah, actually, Don't worry too much about it. Yeah, and actually a plate, knife and fork. Put that in the bin. Um, welcome aboard. Lots of, lots of fun to be had with Domino's Should over the course of the situation. Should we just cancel the show there and fuck it off and go keep, home? Should we just keep <laughs> chewing? Um, I, uh, yes, I was going to say, from pizza at home to the home of the pizza... No? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm... Oh, my lordy B, Italy. Am I starting again? Well, have you got three things? I do have three things, yeah. I looked at their results last year. Their best result last year was a 48, 45-18 <laughs> loss to England. That was the best result. Yeah. I mean, obviously, let's not lie. Let's not lie. Let's not lie. Uh, it's going to be tough for them. Um, I'm going to put a positive spin on it. It's in Rome. <laughs> it's yeah. Valentine's weekend. It's a great trip for all those... The three of us are going again. Birds. Yeah, we're going to be hugging it da, out. Da, 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 da. <laughs> a little shout out to my wife's best friend, Dolly Maud. It's her 50th birthday. We'll be out there. Happy birthday, well. Dolly. Happy birthday, Dolly. Um, uh, I've gone with Zanon. Uh, he's back. He's had a few injuries. He's only got seven caps. I actually thought he had more than seven caps. But I think he's a proper player in the midfield. Um I love watching him. He's, he made a few of our teams of the week uh, when he was playing in last uh, was it last year Six Nations. Um, I think he, watch out for him. I think he's, he'll be good for if you're in your Six Nations team uh, uh, playing the whatever fantasy it's league. Fantasy league. Um, so and finally, I've got Kieran Crowley, RBC. The problem with it, Italy at the moment is their nuts and bolts. They are quite good at creating things and they play high tempo. But you've got to get you've got to be able to exit, you've got to be able to restart, and you've got to be able to defend. And at the moment, <laughs> quite <laughs> important. Sorry. <laughs> so basically, play rugby from the sounds of what you're saying. But, I'm no expert. <laughs> but they they try to they've got a, a good way of attacking, but they do need to switch a little bit onto protecting their own ends. And if they do, hopefully, it won't be 48 mm. 16. It might be 32. 16. I imagine they had a similar marketing bloke for the Titanic. <laughs> well, the hole's not that big. I mean, I'm sure some people have survived. One iceberg. The water's not that cold. I'm sure it'll be okay. Was that three? Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the three were Zanon. Yep. Rome for Valentine's yep. weekend. And Kieran and Crowley. Kieran Crowley and Garbisi. Garbisi needs to run the show. Okay. Um, Eddie rates Kieran Crowley very highly. Give us three. The Anthem. Okay, I quite like that. It's just quite, you know, it's, you know, that it kind of gets you. It's like a little bit. Da, 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 da. What is it? See, uh, when the when you say anthem, I then almost think of Parise because they almost brought Parise back into the squad. <laughs> well, I was going to say the second one was Sergio Parise. Was the best thing about Italy. He's retired now, but he was brilliant. He was they for me. They were going to bring him back in for a final swan song. Yeah, do it. Well, they kept, they've been trying to do that since the yeah. World Cup in Japan when his final well, game go? got it? cancelled. But he broke his hand and he hasn't played enough games for too long, so they didn't. Is that right? I think that's it. Yeah. Um, Have a job. <laughs> Thank you. That beautifully. Um, and then I said Parise. Um, I mean, and the third thing about Italy is they just keep on trying. No, no, that's, I know that, what that, you were going to say for the third thing. Was the aftermatch functions there as well? It's pretty quite right. special. Aftermatch functions are great in Italy. Very good. Um, and they're basically, they can go on for essentially several days. Yeah, they treat you like gladiators. You get te you get taken to a palace, yes. basically, and you get treated like like kings. Yeah, very good. And, you know, you, we often stayed in a hotel that looked over the whole of Rome. And I remember one evening on a Friday, just we'd finished our meal. I was finished my sticky toffee pudding that was forced to eat in Italy when I wanted some... Italian sustenance, and there was a lightning storm over Italy. It was a dry, dry day, but lightning as it looked over. It was a, a sensational. Sistine chapels were awesome as well. Rugby-wise, do you know what? Their never-die attitude. 
That's that for me. You've got to take it. You get they get battered four hundred nil, but they just jolly well keep trying, and that's what life's all about. Sorry, I need to pause because I'm going so hard on pizza still. <laughs> Can you chat amongst yourselves? I'll be back with you in a bit. Yeah. Um, I had Kieran Crowley. Do you, you know you mentioned the palace? Yes. Just reminds me. Oh. A very long time ago, I did some work with a brand heavily present in English rugby. I won't name it because they might not be too pleased with it. And I came out to Rome and I was filming sort of content around the England games at the time. And it was one of the games where you played... I think it was the weekend that Wales... No, it wouldn't have been that because that didn't work. Anyway, it, all, loads of teams could still win it and England had to do an absolute job yes. on Italy. And I think you put 50 points on them and that therefore meant you held the trophy yeah. yes. unless, uh, unless Ireland won in France. Yes. And so I was with the team waiting to do interviews. That was a drop goal, was it? No, that was Sexton. That was um, That was the first game of the tournament. I think it was... I think Ireland did win in that France. That was post-match where Johnny May um, <clears throat> broke a toilet... Right, but like, no, but when I said broke, like broke the toilet, like just destro- like shat. I don't know how he did it. Did something to it, destroyed the toilet, and so then, then, then Stuart Lancaster, the coach, and had to you, have a word. Did you do the long poo? Where you I don't on the toilet. <laughs> no, I, we did. An, so basically, I go with give, my dominoes. Tins has a chart of different ways to approach the toilet, and there was one of them was someone with their head, like someone sitting down normally, somebody crouching, someone sitting on the back, someone actually in it with their head poking <laughs> out the top of it. We'll put it on Instagram with it. And there was one where you stand on the back and face the wrong way. I think he stood on the toilet and broke it to the point where there was nothing left and just water gushing out like it, like in the movies. Right. And yeah, they had to have a long chat. And then I did. I wasn't there to capture that content. I was there that to talk to you about winning the trophy. Were anyway, you didn't win the trophy. I then got picked up in a blacked out Range Rover, driven to a private airport, flown back by private jet, which felt quite rock star at the time for this brand. And now you're here. France against Italy, game one. Italy against England, game two. Ireland against Italy, game three. Italy against Scotland, game four. Wales against Italy, game five. Their best chance of a win COVID. is... COVID. <laughs> Good answer. The best chance. The best chance is who are they going to get closest to? France first up game one. Cold. No chance. Minch Hampton. England game is two. It at home though. Yeah, I know uh, it's away in Paris. Yeah, no chance. But we're talking about a France side, French side that knows how to no win the games they can't um, win. And Wales is the their best chance. chance. In the last game oh in Cardiff. Oh my god! He's gone and done it. He's pulled the pin. Are out. they? Are they your new pin the tail on the donkey? No, they're. Uh, so you're going to have to finish your mouthful. So. Has... <laughs> I'll just chat to myself and... Mm. Well, we can pause this. That's the beauty of it. The Domino's partnership might start and end yeah. on the show because yeah. we can't carry on scoffing <laughs> yeah. our bases. Um, it's great for the brand because it's very Moorish, but at the end of the day, we can't focus and can't carry on. Um, be- Why well, I say Wales is their best chance because it's out the all the other teams. Wales is the only one I've got a question mark over at the moment. Obviously, they're defending champions, <laughs> but... They're, I'm just not sure where they're at at the moment. I think a lot of people would agree. Now, that's n- not saying that they can't come out and smash people, but I, I think having spoke to quite a few Welshmen, they don't really know where they're at either after the autumn. So I would say that's their best chance, but it is in Cardiff, so <laughs> I'm con- um, you wouldn't expect that either. So I'm co- I feel like I've got caught in a time warp. Who won the last Six Nations? Wales. But they had a Grand Slam robbed by France with the last play of the last game in extra time in Paris. Right. I can't it remember was, that. Dulac, we... was it Dulac who scored? Mm. What were we doing then? It feels like a different life. That's what I mean. Ago. I genuinely don't remember. What, what Was it that with COVID time, no crowds? Was it? Yeah, I didn't yeah. there were crowds, yeah. There were weren't there? crowds, actually. There weren't, there weren't crowds. crowds. Right, that's why I didn't There has been it. a sort of, like, melange yeah. of international rugby in the last two years. It's quite hard to pick that's who what did I mean. what when. I can't remember. I didn't. Th- when you went there with defending champions, I was like, tins of pizza's gone straight to your brain. I was like, but no, you're right. Yeah. What did France do? How did they pull that up? No, they France did, beat uh, Wales, but they lost. No, they then lost to, no, they they then lost lost to Scotland, Scotland the week later in a delayed game because where of they, COVID. they ran because they ran the last play of the game, yeah. thinking that they could win it when they couldn't. Yeah. They needed four, they needed a bonus point yeah. try, which they wouldn't have got by scoring. And, and, then, and scored. then Scotland scored, and they lost the game. Oh, and that goes back to my madness. bit about the unpredictability of France. <laughs> <laughs> the unpredictability is the, is the cheese it? beginning to get to you. <laughs> <laughs> Might be. Uh, um, can we have a very quick spread bet on the first tweet, the timing of the first tweet to mention Georgian rugby replacing Italy? Do you think we'll get to half time of the first game? Why can't we have game? Japan in and just skip Georgia? 
Uh, well, Georgia are our neighbours and our cousins on the European yeah, continent. Be Japan quite are a long li- commute a little bit. For, the, for the Japanese. All right. Lazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, we want to give you a chance, hey. Chief, to get on the global scene. Yeah. Can't complain about playing well, distances. We're just trying to help. Why don't Japan should go and play with... So Georgia are the next best option because didn't they didn't they get absolutely drilled to everyone was like Georgia yeah. Georgia and then they lost and was like it to l- just carry on <laughs> carry on <laughs> brush it under the carpet pretend it didn't happen that's what that's what I thought it was that well, did happen yeah but perhaps Georgia need a, a proper crack I'm at gonna, it I'm going to I'm going to go off your boat and just invite Russia in I'm sure they'll put a lot of money in um, <laughs> interesting Kieran Crowley said he thought there should be a playoff between bottom of the Six Nations and top of the Tier Two European competition yeah. I I think that's fair. Uh, because I still don't think uh, Georgia beat Italy, but at least it answers... But it'll be a hell of a game. But, and it answers the question, though. It answers the question. And it says you're dealing with a problem. And do you know what? Sometimes you just got to go, look, there it is. Here's right. your chance. You yeah, fucked it. exactly. Have another chance next year. Carry okay. on. Yeah. Can I ask Ryan to come back in? Because otherwise we're going to yeah. take about four hours to clear up the pizza. Yeah. But Domino's, thank you very much indeed. If we're doing this on a weekly basis... Well, I probably I should have to... one more slice. Like I, don't, I, don't wanna, I feel like I'm in box. Why don't you wrap the last six into one and do like a Billy Vunapola? I, I see what you were thinking there. You're going, Jesus, this isn't going to work for me and my Archie Curzon fight. So. But actually now I'm carbo-loading. It works perfectly. Thank you, Brian. I'm going to need something because I ain't got I need to find a job for you. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? <laughs> just just have pepperoni and muffles. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Domino's. Ireland. Andy Farrell in the coaching box. Please get back into your Hugo Boss suit. He's so mm. sexy with that He's beard, looking he? just like the, the man crush continues. So, and so it continu- good you think suave, sophisticated, then he opens his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, lads, let's knock in. No, well, you can imagine it's, that. It's, he would be the next Bond if he didn't go, All right, Miss Morning <laughs> Penny, do you want fucking beer? <laughs> Sorry, what? you're not allowed to come in this establishment. Um, a Bart Reynolds Citron round corner. Uh, Gin and uh, <laughs> oh, no. Martini, sir, shaking our stuff. <laughs> Fuck off. Yeah. Boddington's, please. Boddington's. We're not fucking about. Oh, right. Bond, you need a gun. Fuck off. I've got a bat in the back of the car. <laughs> that, would be, that would be a very good Bond God, rewrite. It would be there. amazing. Oh, I got a bat in the back of the Vauxhall. <laughs> Vauxhall. Oi, go to. Oi, uh, it, it, we go like um, Casino Royale and go to sort of French Riviera. Oh, don't worry about that fucking French muck. Right, Give me Gala. <laughs> gala Casinos. Oi, bingo all. Do we got fish and chips? I'm not having any of that French nonsense. Snails, disgusting. I bet neither of you would say any of this to his face. <laughs> I'd, say oh, no, from a, I'd say from a distance. Yeah, I'd you say can. That. Oh, yeah, I'd you say can get away with you it. Can. You play I'm scared of him. him. Yeah, quite right, too. Um, I think he, I think he's got even more kind of enigmatic since his team has just started dominating as well. Yeah, so that's how you beat the All Blacks. Yeah. yeah, walk tall. I went Caelan Doris, superstar in the making. Gary Ringrose, proper class act. If Ringrose plays, that is true. They've got a, should do. They've got quite a little. They've got a lot to pick there. from. So um, much to like about Ireland. Where have you gone? I are I've, you on the Ireland? Are, are you, where are your love levels for Ireland? No, at no, the moment? I've got good love, <laughs> love levels. They played. Some, went higher, they played some no, amazing, no. Uh, amazing stuff in the in the autumn. Yeah. Um, and I'm all on board with. I'm just on board with good rugby, and they've they've the sh- the shift. So my first one is a new era. Love it. Um, I think what the coaches have done has been fantastic, and finally it's paying off. You see a lot more movement gain. Uh, and I want to see what they did in the autumn and, and hopefully make even more improvements and they'll be even better. And that's only good for, for the Six Nations. Uh, my number two is the fans. They're only fans that can make you when you lose think that you've played well. Ah, uh, for sure, you tried hard though. <laughs> and you don't know whether they're taking the piss out of you or whether they're being genuine. And if you beat them, you go, fair play, boys, fair play. And you're, you're going, is, is he, are they angry about it? Or you can't really tell, but they always make you feel good about yourself and they'll buy you a Guinness. So that's always a good thing. Obviously, they're coming to England. Um, so we'll see what they're saying afterwards, whether they're being really nice in a, in a win or a defeat. Uh, and then my third one is uh, Jameson Gibson Park because I think he has been, uh, he was a revelation in the autumn in terms of the way that they're playing. He is providing them with such fast ball from breakdown. It's allowing their style of play to, to get that movement and get that free flow. And I think he needs to be on song because what Eddie always says is as soon as you get to Six Nations, it becomes more attritional. It doesn't have to be. You can still lift the pace of the game. Uh, and I think he's key for that. Proper rugby answer. Yep. Let's frame that, clip it, and give it to the people who care. Well, Ireland. <laughs> There's a lot to like about Sexton Ireland Sexton right and Amani. Mm. Name me a better duo of kind of old school heads that come together and have been st- still doing it since day one. Very excited about both of them. Still firing. Sexton over 100 caps. 
didn't make the Lions call. Didn't get the Lions. Um, still going. Amon here is also taking over there. Mal! Mal! Yeah. Mal! Ref, Mal! 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 Peter, okay. what else have you got to your game? Mal! <laughs> he's got a great lawn and an ability to shout more. Um, no, he's much better than that. I'm just mugging him <laughs> off. Um, what else? Well, it's actually, it's good. I, I love the away days in Ireland at the Aviva because it's the hardest stadium to go to. I don't like it. It's my least favourite stadium, but the hardest place to go and win, especially as I've said it before on record, they bring that small wizard out. It puts a spell on everyone before the game and we always lose. And then I, they told me live on... Well, You're talking about the Irish Prime Minister. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's what they said. I didn't realise I made that joke on Irish TV. They went, that's the president, that's Michael. I was like, yeah, I mean, I'm still going to stick with the joke. Because yeah. Um, yeah, he did. He used to come out, put a spell, it'd start raining and we'd always lose. Um what else do I like about them? Um, it's a very good question. Hot to trot players. They're just Tyg Byrne. Yeah, Tyg Furlong. Yeah, I just I d they're just the hot. They're for me. Porter. What, what I like and dislike in equal measure. They were the hardest Kelleher. team to play against. If you ask me, who was the hardest team to consistently play against in my career? Ireland. Why? Because we just kept losing. We lost Grand Slam games to them twice. Um, always very difficult to play away. Like 2011 and... Yeah, 2011, 20... Uh, 14. No, 2017. Um, we, uh, so that, yeah, that was a nightmare. They just... They're all good lads as well. They're, you know, they're, 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 but they're just very, very difficult to play against. And you just... Some days, when they turn it on, they're just... You can't beat them. They're just so physical. They play with a real kind of bounce in their step and then other times you'll get an upper hand but when it counts, they always turn up. Yeah, when there's something to play for, the, yeah, that's they can what I mean. raise their game. Yeah. I'd say that that the way days and exactly what Tin says, you know, they, they can con you into the you know Oh, I don't want to be this by so much <laughs> Sorry. Take it easy on yeah. oh, this. Give us an easy run. Take it easy. How was that slightly camp? <laughs> it was. It was. Irish don't, be, listen, don't be crazy on it. Don't be just by too much. Have a drink or relax. Don't just take it easy on the boys today and then you lose. Like, fuck you, we fucking beat you. <laughs> like, what? That's quite good. Thank you. Um favourite oh, yours would be O three, favourite Dublin memory? Yeah, O three was good. Um it always is at forty seven thirteen or whatever, but um, we had a good win in the 2011 warm up games for the World Cup. That's my that only favourite game. That was Manu's. Yeah, Manu's debut, little it? debut. I played, that was my only, that's my only favourite game in that of either. Really? Yeah, I have never had a good day there. <sighs> Apart from that 2011, we played eight, went well. Manu. Manu was on fire. Yeah, I, I always feel bad though because I always say Manu's debut like shocked everyone but then he hit Paul Wallace and he didn't really play against oh, David, me. Yeah, David, David Wallace, Wallace sorry. Yeah, and I yeah. felt really bad about it because David Wallace is like an amazing David player. He's a hell of a player. You don't want to see him ever get hurt because yeah. he hit him so much. Like his knee was in yeah. County Armagh yeah. and his fucking body was in Dublin. It was awful. Yeah. Um, but that was, that was tough. Manu still got reeled down on a free intercept though, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Best Irish player you've seen played against? Brian, Brian just yeah. I like I know it's a cliche, but incredible. Just could do everything. Um, was probably mad on the piss. Never got anywhere near him because he wouldn't hang around like me. But um, was just such a threat on the field. Um, was their emotional leader and, and energy so much of the time, and just did things you just couldn't do. And normally, when you get a player with that mercurial ability, they normally got a hole in the game. Like sometimes a fanny, and they don't want to tackle because they're so good in attack, but he would sickle you, compete on the ball, turn it over, stamp on you a little bit, rough you up, run real hard, and then chip, volley, catch it, volley it again, <laughs> drop goal at the same time. You'd be like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Selfish. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you look outside Drico. He's been so... Uh... Do you remember days against him and what it took and how you prepared and... Yeah, but the problem is with like 13 on 13 with a player like Drico, is generally where he gets all his success was he'd bounce back in and he'd bounce inside two and then he'd find a lazy forward and then he'd smoke them. So a lot of the time it wasn't in your channel. Um, so it was almost like you had to follow him in. But you're like, Will, you're man, and he'd step inside Will and then he'd step inside Johnny and then he'd... he'd He'd go around backy. Yeah. Backy will hate that. He'll tweet about that, <laughs> won't he? Uh, yeah, but that was that was sort of how he did. And off off rooks and like he'd run off rooks and moors and find props and and that's where he he really was exceptional at finding his holes and and then he was a power runner that could get through them. You know, you look at that fate the try for the Lions against Australia. It was through Jeremy he found Jeremy Paul mm. at the right time and bang, steps off his right and he's gone. Um and then he obviously had such good feet to finish it. You know, they, 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 he had that hat trick on debut not on debut was it on in debut? Paris, in uh, Paris it wasn't his debut it wasn't no, his debut but first Six, first Six Nations, Nations though, wasn't it in 2000 no it was 6 Six Nations, 2000 yeah. um, 
I, I, he just had that skill set. As you say, you, you watch the video, training video, where he chips over and then he volleys it over the fullback and yeah. then catches it. I mean, I mean, I've never asked you this before. Two thousand and three and the anthems. Yep. Did Did you have any rec- Do you have any recollection of it at all? It's totally incidental. Do you remember thinking, "Holy Moses, Mary no, McAleese made no, to walk so, in"? So, so how it worked. How generally it works is you warm up on a side, yeah, and that's the side you run out for the anthems, yeah. So that is all we did was run out for the anthems, and then obviously they always we, lined up to once, the right. Yeah, once we've lined up, they've they've gone. Well, can you move? Because obviously the well, presentation, the prime, Mary the prime, Mary McLeese, yeah, it comes out and it goes from left to right. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, and. John O just literally looked around to the boys and just whether it was because of you know what had happened in two thousand and being that hard nosed cutting edge, he just literally led the boys and said, "We ain't moving," and everyone was like, well, "Okay." We won't move. <laughs> and do you remember thinking, "Cool," or do you remember thinking, "Okay"? No, no I was like, "Fine." John O said it, but then when, when it's literally going into the tenth minute of, "Please, can you move?" and you're like, "I don't know why don't we just move?" <laughs> no, we're not moving. Um, but it wasn't done. It wasn't done on purpose, like people think it was. It was just because we warmed up that side, we ran out that wide, and then we were playing that way first. You'd done the coin toss and everything, so um, that's why we ran out that way. And then, and then John just made the call. We ain't moving. And when John says something, we're, we're that, doing it. That sounds like um, in the 2015 World Cup with the arrowhead against New Zealand when. Everyone's like, 2019. Wow. That was 2019, sorry. That was uh, pure genius. And I'm like, no, the dickheads were supposed to make a semicircle. They didn't know what a semicircle was. So they just made a fucking arrow. Yeah. And everyone's like, that is some of the most genius play. Imagine if I if I was ever captain. Lads, we're staying. Lads? Oh, <laughs> God. I'd be staying on my own. And I'd refuse to move. I'm too stubborn. I love it. One of the great, sta- one of the great tales. But then um, they moved the carpet the around us, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, there's all sorts going on. I mean, so oh, just... we're in the dead ball area. Why couldn't she just go from right to oh, left? No. I'll let you have the run up first. A oh, Wales, your new island? No, no, they're not my new. They're not my new island at all. Because I think last in the last Six Nations last year, in the last Six Nations last year, that's freaking stupid thing. Cut that. <laughs> in the last Six Nations, they actually got better as the tournament went on. I mean, they got lucky in the lucky in the first two games with having red cards and getting those wins when they probably especially against Ireland didn't really deserve it but they got better all the way through now I just feel whether it's injuries you know the loss of uh, Alan from Wales um, you know obviously may yet be fit of well, course he will. Of course be. he will. He's in a laboratory in Wayne Cardiff at the moment, plugged in in one of them water tanks with an oxygen. He's been asleep like the Winter Soldier. <laughs> um, there's a lot of, pre- you know, it's a big pressure on Dan Bigger to sort of step up. I think, I think finally, hopefully, he'll get the recognition he needs because Dan is, is a great player and I think he can hold that team together. Um, but it, there is question marks over over this team. You know, didn't have the best results in the in the autumn. They, they they didn't quite find the form that they finished on the, the the Six Nations. So there's questions. I mean, I've I've put in Pivac. We must trust because of how he was on this show. He he's always going to go down a legend in our book. Yeah. Um, because hopefully he's he's got his police outfit ready to go on the sideline with, <laughs> and he's got he's got a blues like and a, twos. Yeah, he's got like a Camaro that he's going to park on the side and do his <laughs> do his conferences and sit there. Yeah, wouldn't it be good if the the camera panned to the uh, let's go to the coach's box and he's sat in a Camaro with uh, Steve Hansen or a, a plastic board of Steve Hansen. Put it in the mandate. Put it in the mandate. Drinking yeah. out with a brown yeah. bag like that. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, someone's injured. Throws a packet of chips down, and runs out. <laughs> well, he leaps the barrier, don't yeah. think. Um, but then, so we've got Dan Bigger. We've got Pivac. I, I just loved. I think he can. Pull, if you can gel that squad together, you can still have a good... Um, and they've still got a quality back line. And then Lewis Rees-Zammet, can he have the same impact that he had last year? Um, so it's not a second-year syndrome because he's been in the Premiership for long enough, but this is probably his second big year on an international stage. Can he still win them? You know, he won them two games last year, really, didn't he? Yeah. Scotland and Ireland, would it be? Yeah. So... Can he do that again? That would be my question. Emma Raducanu um, follows Lewis Reed Summit. How how do you know that? I don't know, just do. Slipped into a DMs, didn't he? No, no I'm married. I haven't slipped into a DMs. No, no, I just, Lewis, has Lewis Summit, I think so. Has he, though? What's going on there? That could be a power couple. Imagine yeah. that. Emma Raducanu and Lewis Reed Summit. If it, if it happens, 
We said it here we first. We said it here first. Wow. We do predict the future. We do. We, do. The future. Um, we get a lot of shit lot, lot <coughs> wrong for everything we, we get right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Had... We only talk about the good things yeah. that we get right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Wales. Yeah, Wales. Wales, Wales. Um, Wales. Come on, the Welsh. Well, I would say firstly, the Principality. I made my debut there. Uh, it was known as the Millennium Stadium there. That's Principality. Incredible. I just love the the whole structure of it. The fact the pitch is so close that they send that absolute roidenort goat through your warm up, and nobody wants to go anywhere near it because they have your arm off. Um, <laughs> they send a two hundred piece marching band right through your warm up area. Don't give a fuck about you. Fans are just screaming. Um, you know, the, the moment you drive through Cardiff. The whole place is geared to be a hostile environment. You've got people dressed as tulips giving you the wanker sign. Da- daffodils? <laughs> daffodils. Tulips are Dutch. Oh, for fuck's sake. What, they do flowers. look similar, don't they? Uh, well, no? they're flowers. Right, giant, okay. You get people as giant daffodils, you know, like, look like they should be quite a, fen- a friendly flower full of sunshine, wanting to rip your head off. Um, and just the intensity, you know, to play with a principality with the roof closed. A lot of rugby fans and a lot of journos and media, they always talk about the crowd being the 16th man, right? That's rubbish, especially at Twickenham. <laughs> you know, if you can hear them, it you know, chance to be a fine thing. I mean, they've piped up recently because we're doing well, but when things, that they disappear. When things don't go well, they disappear. But at the Millennium Stadium, or Principality, sorry, they are flat out and have a physical effect on the game. That You know, to be five points down five metres from the Welsh line is like an oppressive force pushing you completely discombobulating you can't think you don't know you can see actual faces at Twickenham it's just a sea of red trousers and barbers (laughs) and Guinnesses Uh, you don't you don't see that you know and but over there you can physically see them um so that's one element of it just that whole that whole match day experience and again you know we had that moment with Chris Robshaw wouldn't be bullied. You know, they wanted to put this whole show on at that, you know, the game. They wanted us to walk out first and made us wait. And old Robbo was absolutely having none of it. No idea. Where were you in the lineup? Um, probably in the 24th Travelling Man when right. I, I was. Um, you can sit down in the chair and read the paper until I think it's fine. That was a game that I uh, ran into the post. But oh, I'm glad you mentioned it. To man, of the, uh, man of the Match by George Ford, where most people said that I was actually Man of the Match, but not that I've got over it. But anyway, don't worry about it. Um, and so that yeah, that I was I was somewhere. Down, I think I was like fourth fourth man in the line. And we and, we, and I, we, do classic, you remember that? I'm thinking yeah, this is what it's about. Yeah, because it was one of those things where they said um, classic me. They're sort of saying, you know, Robbo, don't do it. And everyone's like, no. And I was like, tell him, Robbo, f- tell him, fuck off <laughs> and stuff like that. And people were looking around and be like, we're not going out, we go out. We're like, fuck off, mate. We're not doing it. Go away. Just telling the people like, move on. We're like, no, go away. No, we're going out at the same time. And Robbo would just be like, you know, he was obviously saying, no, we're not going to do it. Hell fast. So we'll go out at the same time. And he was kept doing it. The time was ticking away, and they because obviously TV dictates. Yeah. Um, and we went out and they did the whole dimming of the lights thing, and then we played right Friday night where at the Millennium Stadium. That was at the game actually. Was well, it, game. it was a belter. That was a Massive proper game. league. And that game. was the, the one and only time that I have uh, been walking around the field after a win, and the crowd was still singing "Swing Low, Sweet Chariot." Wow. They'd taken over. That was like unheard of because normally it kind of disappeared. You know, it's a tough place, but. 20, 30 minutes after the final whistle, they were still singing Friday night. It was, it was insane. Um, so that's one. I would say, um, I mean... That's a long one. That's a long one. That was a long <coughs> one. That was a lot what of one. you think, uh, I was, uh, when you were saying about the marching band and everything, have you, have you, have you watched any of the NFL over the last few weeks? Um, and the kickers warming up while the cheer, cheerleaders are going round them and everything else. And, and then quite a lot of the kickers have then won the game in the last play. Obviously, um, the Cincinnati Bengals have done it twice now in two yeah. weeks. And he's called Shooter, isn't he? Evan Mc... Evan Mc... Whatever he's called. Evan McFever. Don't Evan know. Mc, I'll tell you what he's called, because I do have it. Evan McPherson, his nickname's Shooter, because it sounds like M- McGavin. Shooter McPherson. Shooter McGavin. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what else I, what I like. I just go with that <coughs> fun. I just go with yeah, that. Yeah, so that's a long... I like that. I like your one. personal memories as well. Yes. Of that I like very that. special day. I, I, I had... Um, Bigger heartbeat. I really like Tame Basham, yeah. who's this young up and comer who just gets into everything. I think he's a proper heartbeat for yeah. Wales. It reminds as well. me a little bit of Ardi Sarve. He just yeah. runs just harder into people than anyone place. else and just keeps his legs going and spinning. <clears throat> what a name, though, isn't it? Tame, Tame Basham, Basham yeah. right? James Haskell. Tame awful. Basham. Tame Basham. Yeah. You like that? It sounds like a power for rugby. You can build is he, a brand is he like some that. way Kiwi? It sounds very Kiwi. Don't know. Tame Basham. Could they love a Kiwi. Is that well, he, <laughs> they're not repatriate a lot of people. Uh, Shane I think Howarth. he may have looked at a postcard <laughs> yeah, yeah. of Wales once when he was in Rotorua. <laughs> Get him in. I mean, quite good as a dad though. Tame Basham. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd yeah. like to be here. Um, I love the Principality as well. I, I 
jotted down Robbo's refusal to work, walk out of the tunnel. We were talking about stadiums where things happen. Yeah, the principality yeah. things just happen. Was it's it the greatest um, stadium? When Wales scored, what did they score? 17 points in the last four minutes to beat Scotland in 2013. Mm. Do you remember that? I don't know if you remember that. Kind of thing. Henson's penalty, 05. Ogara's drop goal yeah. to win the Grand Slam in 09. Just, just things happen at the principality well, that live long in the memory. Well. We were getting, we lost to Wales, mugged off, and these these lads were um, abusing us, like shouting, throwing stuff at the bus. So we got the bus to stop because the coaches weren't on them. And these lads came on the bus. <laughs> One of them had his glasses. Someone just took his glass up, snapped him, threw him down the stairs, <laughs> just fucked him straight out of the bus. Right. That didn't get reported on. Yeah, but never mind. We we had the one where they smashed the bus. We had to. Did you, did you get off? No. The, Headbutted the bus. That was Headbutted yes. the bus, and the medic had to get off to tend to him. We left the medic behind. He jumped off the barrier as we went yeah. in. That was two thousand and seven. Yeah. Jumped right. over the barrier, went fuck you, and headbutted <laughs> the bus, split his head, got and then <laughs> got taken out in A and E. And that was when I was like, wow, we haven't even played the game, and they're already <laughs> they're already smashing at the bus. Favorite game in Cardiff. Um, ba, 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 yours, yours was the one you just mentioned. Or well, debut? You lost your debut, but we lost the debut. Yeah, lost my first and last games for England. Sort of sums up the whole journey, really, doesn't no, it? There were some Joking. very good days. There were some between. excellent days. I don't know what my favourite was. I mean, we we beat him by. You didn't lose that very often, did you? No, not the, not class, at the start. No, um, we had we beat him sixty, but that was, that was I think that was at home. We beat him yeah. by forty set forty odd the next year. They all they all blend into one after a while. Favourite Welsh player. Watching or playing against? Uh, Bateman. A lot of people would go with Bateman. Batman was Never amazing. quite got the kudos. Well, gets the, Mate, one Rob, of those players... Rob, you... Howley, Rob Howley was a player as well, by the way. Yeah. Fuck, he was a good player. I mean, they've, they've had some special players, to be to be fair enough. I mean, Jiffy. Yeah. Jiffy, uh, you go watch a highlight reel of Jiffy. Ron Donculus. Wow. The speed. That guy, I mean, that, that, he could play yeah. on, a, on a different level, but, you know... You look at Shane Shane Williams. What a player! Yeah. 60, what was it? Sixty-four tries. Yeah, for the hills. Yeah. <laughs> not necessarily the best era. No. No, not necessarily the strongest. And era also scores. missed a large punk, ch- chunk of his yeah. career as well. But he left out. But also, when you think of that as well, like they still in my time won four Grand Slams. I know. It's like mad. It's you always you always sort of under, yeah. uh, underestimate them because they have those sort of quiet patches, but they're always consistently incredible. I mean, I, Rob Howley for me. Was amazing. You found the best days from Rob Howley. That yeah. that era was next. Some level. good nines at that time. Um, great Rob Howley shredded as well. Martin Williams gives a great tip. Great Nugget, fight. unbelievable. I great to see him fight the good fight. Many happy years working with Yarn Evans, who in his pomp was majestic, <laughs> and Scott Quinnell, who scored one of my favourite tries of all time against the French. Ninety-four. Actually, Scott Quinnell. Do you remember, he like, was a hell of a. He used to stand in a deep kick and yeah. just it was like. Boom. Whoa, yeah, whoa, with those cycling shorts, and you just... all the dark. You talk yeah. about Raf Ibanez and yeah. the ability to accidentally catch an elbow. And here what a lovely guy with. as well. Yeah, you know, like biggest bear hug in the game. He's a and then massive he, unit. And then if, you, if you tackle him, Craig would come over the top and yeah. elbow you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he weighed, he weighed 150 kilos. It's just the size of him. Scott's now. joining us on our in Cardiff for our tour. I love him. I tell you what, um, my when he, I used to my first team before I supported was Richmond. Back in the day, when they had both Quinnell brothers, oh, yeah. Dominic Chapman, Ben Clark, uh, Ben Clark, uh, Bateman. Uh, Pichu, Bateman, Pichu yeah. at nine, they had everybody, and they were yeah. incredible. The first rock star team. That's when professionals went great. Yeah, the then they blew yeah. up. <laughs> they blew up. Yeah, and we're going to pay this. Ash- 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 how much your salaries? Wales, Scotland. There is a remarkable ar- amount of edge around England, Scotland at the moment, which is so good for the tournament. You think about the draw at Twickenham. You think about the Finn Russell pass to Hugh Jones. You think about the first win at Twickenham since 1983 that Scott's achieved last year. Um, Scraps in the Tunnel. Did you play in that one? Yeah. Yeah. What's it called? Ryan, Ryan Wilson. Wilson. And George Ford. Taunts in the After Party, Greg Laidlaw. I mean, it's not really Lively. fair but you're going to go to George Ford, isn't it? It's a bit like... <laughs> but, you know, it's all girls. You, that's what you want. Do you want that as a player or do you just want yeah. to get on a play? Yeah, we can't, play? you know, it'd be a bit not, awkward. No, I'm not talking about, about that. Specific. filling in the smallest bloke. In the, I'm talking about the like naughty schoolboy, George Ford. I'm talking about the, yeah, I love the that. edge yeah, rather of course. than me. Yeah. Well, we had that though. So, so Not when, against Scotland for the large parts of your career. Pardon? Not against Scotland yes, for large... Yes, Did you? under Eddie Jones we did. Okay, so the first year is exactly the same situation. England versus Scotland away. Eddie Jones came in and was the coach and Scotland were talking to me. I mean, look... 
I don't want to. I mean, no one cares what I fucking say anyway, so it doesn't matter. I'm not involved in England because I don't want you know the uh, Scottish team putting this video on in their thing, going, "Yeah, it's really going to make them play well." I mean, if it does, fair play to you lads, but you should be fucking doing something else to motivate you. But we had that that first game, and they were honestly like, "We're going to beat them." You know, a young England experience, uh, unex- inexperienced side going down to Murray Field. That was where we got off the bus. People were throwing stuff at us. Do you remember? Yeah, booing, and we just filled them in. Like I, I mean, I, I played one of my best games. I went on a rampage, just just lost the plot. I mean, it was tight. It was pissing with rain, but we just battered them. And then they genuinely, then they were like super confident. Then we beat them. Then the following year, they came to Twickenham, and the same thing. They were talking about how they were going to pump us. Massive game. We were honestly standing in the line, calling their names like Ryan Wilson. Fuck, you're going to get it. The other like they just people. They all they would do is looking at us. Is that the one we put sixty on them. Yeah. And Jonathan like, they Jones genuinely Jonathan thought Jones they were going to come here and win. And we were like, okay, well, we'll see. And we were honestly, they didn't want to carry the ball. I've never seen, you know, you know a lot about a player when you're calling his name out and you see where he where he was. And they were genuinely shitting themselves. And uh, you go back and watch the footage and we were fucking loving it. We're hitting them, getting up, going again. Obviously, um, and then, uh, then we played them the following year and I was, I was banned. So I was in the stand and they beat us fair and square. Hamish Watson was incredible. Yeah. Um, they, uh, that know, was the Finn uh, Russell fall over the top. Yeah, and they physically outplayed us. They did what we'd done to them the year before at their place. Yeah. And then I got caught in a bar with this, this small Scottish boy who literally chewed my ear off and I looked for help. But I was trying to be really polite and he would not stop going, oh, that's so good for a small country to do so well against the big machine that is England. I was like, no, well, I think you're, I think you're right. I think you're doing well. I think you're pretty well funded. We don't, you know, it's not a major sport in the UK. Just went, I just went on and on. And I was looking at my friends and they were all just laughing at me. And he kept coming back. He was like, well, that's so good, isn't it? You know, so good for us. I was like, please fuck off, mate. Leave me alone. Right. Um, but I, I would say that I love that niggle between England versus Scotland. And I think the same thing's happening this time around. They're talking it up, say so we're going to beat up in England. I mean, that's written the team talk for England anyway. You'd, surely you've got to go down and match the physicality first and foremost. You've just given one back to them, so that's good. Well, not really. I said really. I quite enjoy I the physical. Well. I know, I'm joking. Finn Russell, Cameron Redpath, the other two things I put down. Now yeah. is the time for Finn. Uh, no, I was, I was pretty similar. I put down belief. I think they actually have got to a place where they believe how good they are and that they can beat anyone. Um, whereas before, they always say you could, they think you could beat someone, but they didn't really have the players to do it, whereas they do now. Um, I think they can, they're can. they expecting to win and they, they're expecting to go and compete for the title. Um, the X Factor, I've put down, I think they need their players to show up every week, but when you've got Hogg, Russell, Watson, Redpath, Van der Merwe, you got enough players and you've got enough firepower out there to actually compete in games and that's without going sort of like Turner, Fagerson's, the, uh, Richie, the other players that they've got. Um, and then, yeah, I said Cameron Redpath as well. I mean, he played for Bath and he, played a lo- he made a few lovely breaks on the on the weekend and obviously Bath won their second game of the season. So um, if he can come back, he's only got one cap and he had one hell of a cap to start <laughs> off with. Yep. Um, if he can go back and he can find that form and he's fit enough and, and they pick him, um, he, he's a real additional cog for them in the, in in that centre. I would I would say what's very interesting is when you've read out teams before about Scotland, you know, when before like back in the day, you'd hear Mark Patterson with his like metronomic kicking and there'll be a couple of people. Now there's like exactly what he said, there's like ten players you're like, oh well, wow, he's yeah. right up there, he's right up there, he's right up there. That there is no doubt they're chock full of it. You know, you, you you've earmarked Hogg was, you know, when Finn Russell, you know, was on the smash and couldn't play for whatever reason or whatever, had a falling out, Hogg was always the boy. You know, and then Watson, he, he for me, is one of the standouts. Like, what an amazing player. Physical, you know, they mugged, they, they said that stupid thing about size, fucking irrelevant, very physical, skillful, doesn't ever um, stop. And then you start putting those other players in, like Redpath, that debut, like, we've been desperate to see him again. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're now a team, exactly what he said, like, just full of people that are notable. And yeah. you mentioned another one, and you're like, wow, they really, Bang really are. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it, for, uh, for the first time, I'm not going to say, it, you could easily name their 15. Yeah. And, you know, it hasn't been that way for a It's been building over, obviously, the last four years. Um, but now you can pretty much right. name their 15. And you go, uh, yes, they need a few more players in the, in the background, whether they're 23 is fully laden with all, everything you want. But it's not far off now. It's getting better every year. And, uh, good on. They'll, they'll fancy it. Dangerous. Favorite game, favorite player from the archives. Um, I can. I know your worst. Yeah, worst would without a doubt is two thousand. 
Um, that was when it's foggy, rainy. Well, well, half, no, half time. It was sweet all till half time. We were up, business as usual. Came out and lit. I, I know I'm the king of literally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we was, need to get the literally bell. Yeah, the yeah. literally bell. Um, it was horizontal rain, freezing cold. I remember Pezza dived on the ball about 15 metres out from the try line and slid into the dead ball area. And you know how. You know, along the dead yeah. ball areas at Murrayfield, it was he was just Aquaplane. it, aquaplaning across it. Um, yeah, and Duncan Hodge. Who who was the um uh, who was the there was a hero on the day? Was it what? Well, no, it was Duncan Hodge. Was it Duncan Hodge? Yeah, I so thought, the, the headline was slam dunk because he scored every way you can possibly score in a rugby match. He scored, he scored all the points. Penalty, he scored a try, a penalty, a drop goal, conversion. A conversion. Mine was uh, that and one disappeared in... into the ether as they summoned him down from Mount. Whatever, wherever Zeus comes from, Mount Olympus. Mount Olympus. Olympus. You're welcome. Public school education <laughs> <laughs> um, paid off. That's, just well, not really. Um, <laughs> that's because that's where you say you came from. Yes, it's very true. <laughs> Standing next to Zeus. Um, uh, 2016 went their way. Had no expectation. Fully young team. Eddie Jones, um, Paul Gustard, Steve Borthwick, new coaching staff. Hostile environment. Horrible. Never thought we were going to do well. Beat them, started love, off the start a, of the journey. They love a good bagpipe, don't they? Oh, oh yeah, Beat lights out. Yeah, I just about five hundred miles always, as well. Yeah, always flamethrowers. There's a lot yeah. of flamethrowers yeah. kicking around up there. Um, Scotland, the brave, England. Last but not least, three things you love, have enjoyed, are looking forward to about England in this year's Six Nations. I, I mean, look, personally, the, the whole new look squad. I think. Very exciting. Obviously, there's been a couple of false starts with some people with some injuries, but I think I'm very much looking forward to seeing Marcus Smith start in a in a, in a Six Nations. Uh, Freddie Stewart, I'm looking forward to as well, seeing what he what he can do. Can he capitalise? Um, and there's some some great names in that in that squad. I want to see if they can gel and keep developing that brand of rugby we saw in in the autumn. Obviously, it's still a work in progress. Um, I mean, I look Twickenham Twickenham for me. You know, Principality is right up there, but Twickenham for me is my favourite um, stadium. It's what made me fall in love with rugby. I played in the Daily Mail under 15s Cup there. We won playing for um, Wellington, and it the sight, smells, and sounds, even the smell of the grass on my shirt post game, kind of made me addicted to the whole process and wanting to play there again. And I, you know, I, and when it when it's on fire, when it's on song, and when the crowd are behind you, it's it's incredible. It's never, I never feel it's very hostile, but I feel when it's good and the fair winds. Blows that it's a great place to be and yeah. it's it's monumental, especially when the anthems finish. Um and I just well look, my own personal my own personal memory, you know, I'm not uh I'm not a massive rugby nors, I don't re often reflect, but very lucky to be talking about something that we were involved in, and you'll always have that underlying passion and you remember those cold kind of February, March mornings, getting up, and getting ready, you know, and travelling down to Twickenham to represent your country in the Six Nations where the the combination of fans rivalry you know the probably the best league well the best tournament in the northern hemisphere if not in the world coming together in one thing and you getting a chance for that one moment to make or break someone saturday with your performance is special and to go on and win it and the chance of that like ever present grand slam because you talk about it but so few teams ever back it up get a chance to do it and some people have never done it and and i think that's what makes the magic good on you mm -hmm. emotion <laughs> right. I have no heart. No, I, I, I agree. I put Freddie Stewart down, but he's just one of the, the young bunch that you're sort of looking forward to see. Um, whether you, you know, you put your Rafi Quirks in there, your Harry Randalls, whoever they pick, Joe Marchant, even even though he's, he's not young, he's only got seven caps. Um, you know, you can throw in you're still Max Malins, Ollie Hassel Collins if he gets a chance. Whether that these guys are going to get a chance, but. Yeah, when we did that interview with Eddie, he talked about now he think I know he changes a lot about how he how he said when he talks in an interview and what he says in a in a post match interview. But he always talked about he feels that it's a young man's game now. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what he does with that. But I feel you know with I know J Johnny May's injured at the moment, but with Jack Noel, with Ford, with you have that experience around them. Uh, obviously Ben Youngs, mm. um, you've got a good. You, you sort of got a balance. It's still edged on the side of youth, but there there, there are some old heads in there. Um, my, you know, Marcus Smith come, is my second point. He obviously excelled in the in the autumn uh, under the 
under the sort of pressure cooker of some proper pl- proper teams. You know, sometimes it's not always got to be about him, which I think he found in that uh, in the South Africa game. But he just played his role. You know, you remember Dan Carter in his prime; he could just be just a distributor, yeah. and then he'd wait and he'd wait. And he'd wait, and they go, okay, he's just catch, pass, catch, and then bang, he's gone. And I think I feel Marcus Smith. This is another step on his journey to go into the cauldron. It is somehow different. I know Eddie Jones talks about it being additional because it's Six Nations and weather, but there's no reason why he still can't play great rugby. And I think it's just another um, string he's going to add to his bow because I think this guy can operate under any pressure. Um, so looking forward to that. And as I said earlier, I think the third thing for England is Le Crunch finale. I just, I just hope it goes down to that. Because that would be an unbelievable game. Epic. I threw in Jack Noel back as well. How, he's actually getting sexier, Jack Noel. Mm. Yeah, he's had his hair done. He looks especially. very sharp, didn't he? Yeah. And I'd love to see Ellis. I don't think he will, but I'd love to see Skipsy. Skipsy. Yeah. It's a shame because I thought Courtney would yeah, get I'd a like, chance yeah, exactly. again. Yeah. Big courts. They've got some leaders in there now. They do. The other thing I threw in was just Eddie. What will the story be this year? There's always a story with him. Something happens. He get he's he's just he's brilliant box office. Mm. You know you can't take your eyes off him over the course of the next seven weeks. Um, it is going to be a mega tournament. We're going to add something. No, I just love how Eddie is so different in a. He's so interesting in a, in yeah. a podcast interview and then in a media interview. You're like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, I think but that's, that's why he does it. it. Yeah. yeah. So he does it. Break, accelerate, accelerate, break, yeah. as a wise man once said. I got tickets to one game this in this year's tournament. Which one's it going to be? What do you want to go to? It will either be, you know, just pin my hat to what I've said all the way through. Do you reckon it, an Italy fan will choose an Italy yeah, game? Yeah. <laughs> it, England, England, France last day. Yeah. If I had to pick another one, it'll be Ireland, Scotland. Oh, I like it. Little Celtic brethren. You got a game you want to get you, did you then? Do, do you... <laughs> I love your hat. Do you interest? Is it worth asking you? Do you care? Yeah. No, look, I, I think people find... It, I've developed this caricature of A, I was shit at rugby when I wasn't, which is very good. Um, because people keep sending me clips and stuff. Going, Actually, you could catch the pass. I was like, yes, don't listen to Tindley talk shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'd say England, France, because I want to see where we're at in comparison to France. You know, um, at the end of a tournament, no COVID interruptions. None of it. I mean... I, they probably are still doing some crap bubble thing, mm. but hopefully we've all moved past that and there's there's some freedom. But if not, um, I'd quite like to see Ireland, France would be quite good. Oh, that is yeah. a good one. I think there's a good one, you know, uh, Galtier, Farrell. Different there are stro- some belting, different strokes for different folks, two games. Yeah. See, it who, runs on from the autumn when we were saying suddenly the top eight in the world now can all yeah. beat each other on the day, which so, makes us So that comes down to tournament. who's winning Six Nations. Well, that's my next question. <laughs> don't preempt the world class yeah. broadcaster we haven't spoken about this morning and frankly your betrayal of the man who keeps the ship afloat <laughs> oh this morning interview yeah yeah Dermot O'Leary has got a bigger profile than you yeah. and he's got the, he's he Irish. could raise our socials he doesn't know anything about French rugby in the early 90s <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know anything or, about Bath between 1975 and 1999 Mayo. um but he is dreamy. He has that extra kudos. He has a lot of followers. Just imagine how much our social following. Oh my god! Honestly, you, he that could, is the currency in which you <laughs> pathetic individuals value your lives. <laughs> he could open doors that you can't even see. You're not even allowed into rooms the where the doors me. are, yeah. or the buildings where the doors are. You're not allowed to pass the perimeter. Sir, can we have the ID? I'm sorry. What are you doing here? You're not allowed here. This is a high level lounge. Um, my sister sent me a message saying. Alison Hannigan, what's she called? Alison Hannigan. Alison- Hammond. 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 Alison Hammond's mentioned you on this morning. Your life is, your life's work is complete. Yeah. I was like, yeah, completed it. It's <laughs> completed. <laughs> we did, yeah, we did. And to be fair, Tim, we did say not to have you on because you would overshadow and show how good you were. And then Dermot came back, well, I'll actually show you how good I was. They didn't need him. And then we quickly went, if you're available, we'll actually take you. <laughs> Alex, yeah. So we, we, start, we started off really strong in your corner. Yeah. yeah. And, and then we flipped to Archie's very quickly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much indeed. Yeah. But just let you know, we're all standing. That's where we're all standing. If you could get, a, if there was something really credible and funny that you could get access to that wasn't me, you do both bin me in a heartbeat. Less controversial. We've been trying for 18 months. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Problem is, no one is that funny and talented. You're welcome, <laughs> Carrie. <laughs> You've damaged the brand. Yeah, you can uh, get Ryan Wilson off that other podcast if you want. I'm sure he's available. Who wins the Six Nations this year? Um, who lifts the trophy? Oh God, I always say England. I'm just... England have got three away games yeah. and they have to go to France and they have to go to Scotland, which I think makes it tough for them. Uh, it's now... It's now flipped. It used to be... This used to be our easiest year, the three away games. Italy. Can we just... You know, I've always had this... 
this like conspiracy theory about England and the fixture lists in the Six Nations. No. Finish, they always finish away from home. When was the last time England had a Grand Slam decider at Twickenham? I know. 1995. Genu- genuinely. <laughs> I love how you even laughed at your own keenness. <laughs> <laughs> well, but why, why did England never get England a Grand Slam game at home? Vote yeah, for but, Haskell. It will change did, the thing. They did play their last game at home last year, didn't they? But they just didn't win the first no, two games. True, actually. It doesn't really stack up oh, if you put pressure on it. But it's a great concept. No, I've just theory. kicked in the door at the RFU and really. demanded change. Yeah. It turns put out your mandate. Put, put, put in your mandate. All England games at home. But I, I feel that you're, well, you you're right. They haven't played their last game at home for a long time. But I, that was the first year last year. Since 1995. I can remember. No, they were in Ireland last year. They got hammered in Ireland. Away was last year. Oh, God. We've got, oh, to do sorry, our, we've got to we, do our due diligence on this no, stuff we, before we, we come we out. Just, we'll and just anyway. chuck out conspiracy theories and let us work with them. So, so who wins the tournament this year? So quick. France have three home games yep. and they have their two hardest people coming to France, I think, in England and Ireland. Ireland. But their banana skin could be Scotland away, which yep. it has been in the past. But I still think France have the best chance of taking a grand slam. I think that's a very educated guess. Oh. For, oh, for, for PR oh. purposes, I'm say, <laughs> saying here comes the alternative view. from France because <laughs> Ireland France. also have three away games, so yeah, that oh, it's hard because I've got still friends like lads. I believe you can do it, but just on the surface of it, in a very simple way, I think France are also going to do very well. But I love you guys, and I think you're doing well. <laughs> this is Blinters on the bench. Fence? On the fence. I'm not fence. fence on the bench. He's not, he used to be on the bench. No, I didn't. Right? No, I've started way more games than I was on the bench. Oh, here's my CV. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh um, having a go at me. Oh, sorry, you... how many times do you drop in 20 years, uh, over 20 years of Sky and Leeds reporter? Yeah, every story starts. There's one, there one time I was at Sky. There's one time I was at Sky. So France. Yeah. Uh, Frankland. Frankland. Yeah. That's uh, what you speak, actually. Yeah, I do. I do speak very good Frankland. I'll go Ireland. What, and what's uh, the rationale behind surprise, that? Yeah, well, because Ireland are always very good at peaking mid-World Cups. Yeah. Although I'm, I don't think this time that that is the case, but I think they are, they come into the boil. Are they? They've won at Twickenham recently, they've won in France recently, yeah. I don't think they'll mind either very much. Okay. Spoke sure voice of reason. Um, I've enjoyed that. It's just sort of just like... Old school, that was an old school show, that. Yeah, just a bit of... I was unprepared. Chewing the fat. Yeah. Well, that's it's not old nice. school, that's every week. <laughs> There's a, there's a definite few bits that, that would be that would be fuck side back in the yeah. back in the back day. Back in the yeah. day. God rest that, side side. We've got, oh yeah, we, well we do have a, a new see producer. how the newbie gets on. Yeah. Sam. Yeah. 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 Got a new yeah, producer. Hopefully, hopefully next week it'll be fuck Sam. Yeah. <laughs> fuck Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Buy him dinner first, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is good looking. <laughs> Oi, modern. Keep it real. Appealing to all churches. Exactly. I mean, yeah. Uh I mentioned this earlier. If you fancy watching a remake of Grant versus Firth in Bridget Jones's Diary, do you know the scene I'm fighting? Yes, I'm talking about. <laughs> That's great. Throw him through. Curzon v. Payno in Brogues in a boxing. <laughs> when they go to hit, and he's yeah. like, "You punched me!" And yeah. he throws him through a window. Uh, we are fighting in front of 400 people, apparently. Ron Burgundy. So we're not hitting him in the face. <laughs> yeah. Oh, of course, we're not hitting him in the face. face. I love that. Who was it? Was it? Oh, so Simon Thomas, who's a, a mate from Sky. Ding. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be our MC. And he said, who's training? And I said, oh, Marcus of Queensbury, obviously. <laughs> it's like, good shout. Lovely. Top chat. So, uh, <laughs> if you want to come and bands. watch, we're fighting at Wandsworth Town Hall. I don't know why we're doing it. You can get tickets on fixer.co, apparently. The F-I-X-R.co. Uh, raising money for Rugby Players Association and the Brain Tumor Charity, two very worthy causes for a very unworthy unworth- event. Uh, do come along and support if you'd like to. Off on our theatre tour, it's getting ever closer, which is slightly alarming. We need to do a little bit of work on that. Uh, tickets are out. We are off from the spring. I think the end of April we're going. Uh, you're meant to have a script at this point, but I'll just do it all, which is mm. which is the norm. Chris Ashton's joining us in Liverpool. Hamish Watson in Edinburgh. Genji's coming to Nottingham. Jack Nolan in Plymouth. Nick Easter in Newcastle. Jiffy Davis in Swansea and Ben Kayser in Oxford. Other guests, I think Scott Quinnell to Cardiff as well, and one or two others who will announce shortly. Uh, Sheffield, Cardiff, Manchester, Dublin, London, Birmingham, Bath and Southend. Apparently tickets are going like hot cakes. Who knew? Uh, you can find all the info on our website, goodbadandrugby.com. Ahoy. Oh, hi, hi. Uh, go on. Well, have also, you got anything to say? Or you just... I have, I have. Yeah, please do. We've, we've also got um, some shooting days. Well, good, yep. Some script. Do you want to read it? 
No, I'll just tell oh, people okay. off the top of my head. Yeah, okay. We've got some fantastic shooting days, which I posted about, and a few fans went, well, I thought we are trying to make rugby accessible to everyone. You know, you're saying it's, a, it's you know not elitist when it's clearly elitist. No, no, anyone can go on a clay pigeon shooting day. It's not It's not going to go, have you got any tweeds? You can't come in. Mm-hmm. So please get tickets now. The last one we did at EJ Churchill's was absolutely fantastic. We've got one at Honesbury. We've got one at EJ Churchill's. It's an incredibly fun day for all the family. You get to interact with us. There is a uh, meals. There is a live show for you. There is autographs signings there's a classic day of shooting what more do you bloody need get your tickets via the GBR website and also the links in my uh, profile and all my stories Tweed is recommended though if, Tweed is yeah. like, if you haven't got Tweed don't bother turning up But and obviously a side by side pair of Holland and Holland and Purdy's <laughs> don't, don't apply Yes, so EJ Churchill in High Wycombe in June, Honesbury in Warwickshire in September, if you fancy getting involved in either of those. We've also got dinners coming up at Ashton Gate in June with special guests, Welford Road and Franklin's Gardens in September, and it says somewhere in London in October. So good luck <laughs> finding that one. Um, <laughs> if you it's a find secret it, one, it's a treasure hunt. It's a treasure hunt. Yeah, we'll leave clues. Eight months. If we'll you leave can find it, pods. it's going to go off. Uh, it's sort of one of those events. That's yeah. it. That's it's not a bad idea. Let's, let's just do that. Well, my friend Should we runs, diversify? My yeah. friend runs those Killing Kittens parties. Right. I'm not saying it's a sort of GBR fusion I with Killing Kittens. K- k- <gasps> Imagine that. Oh my God. I mean, that would, that woman, Andrea from Hello, you want to pop <laughs> along in your best cat mask for that one because you get <laughs> a few IMs on that day. The show is normally produced by Shara Kilgallen, but unfortunately she's had an operation this week on her ankle. Get she well damaged soon. playing rugby. So get well, Shara. We hope you're on the mend very soon. Well done, Sam, for stepping up to the plate in the meantime. Uh, world-class fixer Matt Chuck Norris doing what he does brilliantly. The Good, <laughs> the Bad and the Rugby is a folding pocket production. Enjoy the action this weekend. We'll see you next week. 